Guys, put your hands together for a good buddy of mine, Dan Lamore. He's here! He's here! I was on Facebook this morning and I saw a girl post, Oh my God! Just cut off four inches of hair! That's so long! So I sent her a message, I was like, hey, love the way you describe four inches. <laughs> I started doing comedy because I was a college baseball player and uh, my freshman year opening day I had a career ending injury. I broke my elbow and tore my UCL. So being a college athlete you have to do something every single day of the week. You have to work really hard. So since I got hurt I needed something to replace the time. So I said hey let me become a comedian. That's going to take up a lot of my time and that's why I started doing comedy. I'm diagnosed with bipolar disorder, major depressive disorder, and I'm an insomniac. And surprisingly enough, still single, ladies, so, uh, <laughs> looking for a comedian who's been on TV once, has no money, lives at home with his parents, and is one mental illness away from being a serial killer. <laughs> I'm your guy. I saw some of your faces, you're like, holy shit, can he really be a serial killer? Look at me. Fat, lazy, out of shape. I don't have the nerve to follow you that long. Three steps I'm done. I think I talk about mental illness a lot on stage because I'm diagnosed with bipolar disorder and major depressive disorder and uh, I'm heavily medicated and all that stuff. So I just want to bring uh, light to mental illness and break the stigma that exists that we're crazy people and we can't function normally. I want people to realize that we're not crazy, we're just normal people and we can do things as good as anyone else. And I just want to break that stigma and kind of just bring awareness to mental illness as a whole. Uh, probably when I opened for Kathleen Madigan in Michigan, it was just amazing to work with someone of her level and to pick someone like that's brain. And uh, we had 500 people a show for five shows in a row. And it was just awesome to have that big of a crowd when you go from doing bar shows and small clubs to get into a big club and do a full audience. And mainly just to work with someone of that magnitude who's done so much and to be able to talk to them about Montreal, Comedy Central, specials, Netflix, picking her brain about all those things. I got a new car recently, a real chick magnet, if I may say so myself, a Prius. And uh, I got all the upgrades to the Prius. I got the heated seat that recognizes your body temperature. I got the automatic ignition that starts the car in the winter. And I got the Bluetooth that connects in a 500 foot radius so all my calls go through the stereo so I don't need to hold my phone while I drive. One day I'm home and my parents come up to me like, Dan, can we borrow your car tonight? My car is broken down. So I was like, yeah, sure, it's a Friday night. I'm not doing that well socially. You know, I thought I'd be in a better place. <laughs> They're like, damn, we actually the keys, not your life story. So they get you the keys. So they went to a town called Red Bank, New Jersey, about two hours away from where I live. I called the girl I'm seeing at the time. I'm like, hey, babe, what's going on? She's like, what's wrong with your voice? I'm like, I'm trying to be sexy. Have some cellular intercourse. She goes, hang up, try again. That didn't turn me on at all. So I hung up, called her back. I'm like, hey, babe, what's going on? She's like, let me take the lead on this one. They were going at it for about 10 minutes. I'm like, babe, I'm about to finish. She's like, Daniel Lamort, don't you do what you're about to do. I'm like, oh my God, no girl's ever talked to me like that. Do it again. I love it. It turns me on. Then she says the one thing you never want to hear. She goes, Dan, that wasn't me. <laughs> and what's sitting in the driveway but my brand new Prius with the heated seats, the automatic ignition, and the Bluetooth that connects in a 500 foot radius with my parents sitting in both of the front seats. Oh. My mom gets out, doesn't make eye contact. My dad gets out, comes up to me. I'm like, how much of that did you hear? He goes, enough to know you need to work on your phone sex. <laughs> Uh, in New Jersey, in my hometown, I did a show and uh, I accidentally made fun of a guy's shirt and his shirt turned out to be a Grateful Dead shirt and then there turned out to be multiple Grateful Dead fans in the crowd who in turn attacked me on stage. I had three guys charge at me, one guy take off his shirt and they all came at me and just tried to fight me while I was in the middle of my set and they got kicked out and then I got docked to pay. I didn't get my full pay because I got three people kicked out. Dan Lamort is a struggling, mentally ill comic who has to go on the road to make a few bucks and do shitty shows. But he loves comedy, 
and he's happy he's doing it and uh, hopefully he's a uh, good inspiration to other psycho people. Cut! My pediatrician uh, sat me down and told me I was an alcoholic. <laughs> Which is a very awkward thing because not only am I 21 years old and an alcoholic, but I'm a 21 year old alcoholic who still goes to his pediatrician. <laughs> That's right, six feet tall, 270 pounds, but I'm still comforted by getting needles on a bed that's shaped like a fire truck. <laughs> It's so awkward when I'm sitting in the waiting room of the pediatrician. You know what that looks like? It's terrible. I hear the kids next to me just going like, Mommy, what's wrong with that kid? And I don't know how to react, so I'm just like, I'm sick. 